serotonin, that super important chemical that carries messages around your brain and your whole body. Now it's well known as a mood stabilizer. When our serotonin levels are low, this has been linked to low mood and depression. And medical researchers are still in hot debate about quite how this works. It's not fully understood yet. But we do know that serotonin helps regulate a whole bunch of bodily functions, from sleeping and waking to appetite, bowel movement, serotonin is all around the body. It's not just in the brain. And it hangs out in our intestines and in our blood. And another intriguing serotonin fact, it has an inhibitory effect on sexual desire in men and women. So lower serotonin levels means higher sexual desire. And in men, lower serotonin levels can speed up their ejaculation reflex they come sooner during sex. So generally speaking, higher serotonin levels are a good thing to have. You'll be happier, you'll feel better about yourself, you'll sleep better, and you'll be able to take your time in the bedroom. It's all winning. So if you experience challenges in any of these departments, it makes sense to get your serotonin levels up. And there is medication to do just that. It's estimated that one in eight people in the UK take antidepressant medication. And that really did shoot up during the COVID pandemic. Now these are SSRI pills, which increase serotonin levels in the brain. We're talking Prozac, citalopram, sertraline, there are lots of them. And men who struggle to last in bed, they're often prescribed an SSRI too, whether they are depressed or not. There's even a special on-demand SSRI called Depoxetine, or branded as Prilogy, specifically for premature ejaculation. Now, there's ongoing debate about how effective all these pills are and whether they're overprescribed, and there are worries about their side effects. So suffice to say that they do help a lot of people, not everyone, and sometimes there are side effects and they're too much to put up with. And you can see my other video uh, specifically about the side effects of tapoxetine if you're considering that. So if you want to raise your serotonin levels, but you don't want to take medication or the SSRIs, they're not easily available in your part of the world, you might be considering how else to do it. And that's especially when it comes to tapoxetine or Prilogy which isn't approved by the FDA, for example, and it isn't available in the States. So here is a quick run through of ways to get your serotonin levels up, including the tested, evidence-based ways and some of the more controversial options. And note, I'm a psychotherapist, but I'm not a doctor. You should take proper medical advice if you've got any concerns at all about your health or medication. And if you're already taking antidepressant medication, don't go raising your serotonin levels higher. Too much serotonin can lead to serotonin syndrome, and that has a whole bunch of unpleasant symptoms, and it can even be life-threatening without treatment. Now, this is rare, but it is a thing. So just be mindful of that. Let's begin with food, the obvious way to get more of something into us. Well, there aren't any foods that are high in serotonin. It's made solely in the brain. But there is this amino acid called tryptophan that helps with the production of serotonin in the brain. And we need some tryptophan in our diets for this purpose. So how can we get more of that? High protein foods, they're high in tryptophan, like turkey, chicken, tuna, whole milk, cheese, so you can eat more of those. But, and this is important, the tryptophan we eat, it needs to get past the blood-brain barrier. And that's our brain's natural defense system from chemicals. And a lot of different amino acids are battling to get past this barrier. And unfortunately, tryptophan, it's just not very good at competing with these other amino acids. It gets pushed out of the way, so not much gets up to the brain. So, 
if you just eat a load of protein, it'll benefit your muscles, but not your serotonin levels. Now, a way around this is to eat protein combined with carbs, like vegetables, fruits, whole grains. And you probably do this already, but here's even more reason to. Complex carbs help to produce insulin, which helps your muscles to pull in more amino acids, giving tryptophan a better chance at reaching your brain. Also note that bananas are high in tryptophan too, so they're a good carbohydrate to go with. Now, some nutritionists recommend eating your proteins and your carbs together on the same plate, and some say eat your proteins to stock up on tryptophan first, and then have a high carb snack sometime after. Now, I'll link in the description to a nutritional guide on all of this, but my advice would be don't overthink it. Get a good amount of protein and a reasonable amount of carbs in your diet and you're on the right track. And this will definitely help with serotonin maintenance. One more top tip, Marmite. It's high in tryptophan too, and it's also fortified with vitamin B12. And some research has suggested that this combination can help raise serotonin levels. Interestingly, a study in 2016 also found that men who struggle with premature ejaculation had lower levels of B12. Now, this isn't quite enough to prove that Marmite or any of those other yeast extract spreads are cures for PE, but it might possibly help. And either way, it's a good vegetarian option for getting your tryptophan and your vitamin B12. And be aware that some foods can actually reduce serotonin levels too. Fast foods, things that are high in trans fats like crisps and pizzas, they could deplete your serotonin levels if you eat them regularly. Same goes for artificial sweeteners and alcohol and possibly too much coffee. Go easy on all these things for your health in general. So that's food, real food. How about food supplements for boosting your serotonin? Well, of course, there are loads of supplements for boosting serotonin. When the word gets out in our popular culture that higher levels of something is good for us, completely sensible in the case of serotonin, then a bunch of convenient supplement products come along to get in on the action. Um, call me cynical, I know. Ashwagandha, Griffonia seeds, St. John's wort, canna plant. There are lots of plant extract supplements that claim to help increase serotonin. Now their marketing is usually quite careful, like naturally supports your sleep or supports psychological function. It's also possible to buy pure tryptophan powder as a supplement. You can actually get it in 100 gram bags and it comes under lots of different brands. But I think the same complication with tryptophan from food applies to supplements. You can consume 100% pure tryptophan or 5-HTP, which is a chemical byproduct of tryptophan that's often found in the supplements. And you can consume this all day long, but it needs to get across the barrier and into the brain in order to become serotonin. Remember that it's the neutralizing of other competing amino acids that makes the difference. And this is what complex carbohydrate foods actually achieve by producing insulin. Do any of these supplements have the same effect? I'm not sure they do. Ultimately, I'm not aware of decisive peer-reviewed evidence that these supplements help with depression or sleep or premature ejaculation for that matter. And if I'm missing out on something here, or if new research has proven otherwise, please do let me know. I will be all ears to hear about that. For the price of most packets of supplement, you can get quite a lot of Marmite, just saying. So what else could you do to raise your serotonin levels? Exercise, it's definitely recommended. 
It triggers the release of tryptophan into our blood. Aerobic exercise for around 30 minutes, that seems to be optimal. And things like weightlifting and yoga also has this effect. Now, if you felt that natural high after like an intense workout, you are feeling this ramping up of serotonin along with the release of endorphins and other neurotransmitters. And when the weather and the seasons allow for it, try to exercise outdoors. Sunlight has been found to increase our serotonin production. Get it in moderation, of course. Countless studies have proved that exercise is a great way to get stress levels down. It can help with depression and low moods. So take time out, get sufficient sleep, exercise, do all of the positive things that help get your stress levels down and your serotonin levels will benefit. So to sum up, yes, there are things that you can do to naturally boost your serotonin levels. And the things that I'd recommend are healthy in all kinds of ways. A balanced diet, exercise, getting off our screens, spending some time outside. This will boost your mood. If you're struggling with depression or chronic sleep problems or sexual difficulties, yes, it may well take more than these lifestyle adjustments. But if you're having therapy or you're taking the self-help route, you're actively working on your mental health and looking after your serotonin levels complements this effort. It gives you a good foundation. I hope this has been helpful. And if you have any serotonin top tips, please leave them below in the comments. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions about premature ejaculation or sexual confidence in general, please feel free to get in touch. And my website is linked in the description below. And you'll find lots more advice in my Bang On Time self-help course, which teaches the essential skills for managing your sexual excitement and enjoying sex for longer. And there's a link to that in the description too, guaranteed. Also remember that I'm a therapist sharing my opinions and general advice, but this is no substitute for going to see your own GP or doctor. So if you have any concerns about health or your sexual health, you should go and get a medical checkup and take some advice. Thank you very much for watching.